What's good, Travis? And we back, man. It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. A report live from the trap. My goal is to help the culture build well one share at a time. So right now, we're going to trap in front the biggest trap, right? JP Morgan Chase. It is the biggest investment bank out. We're talking about understanding how exactly the banks makes money. Now, JP Morgan does a great job at not only being uh, a bank for consumers and individuals, but also they're a wealth management bank. So that means they actually invest and manage wealth. But they also do what's called underwriting. So when a company goes public or when a company gets on the stock market, it's a good chance that they'll go through JP Morgan Chase so they can get all their assets and liabilities together and give them actually a stock price. So that's a good thing for them. Right now, they currently have 100 locations. I mean, they are in 100 companies worldwide, 100 countries worldwide. Also, they have 5,000 locations and 16,000 ATMs. Man, listen, they spread that trap house all over, right? So a great thing about them being a wealth, man, a wealth management bank is this. They also do a lot of investing. So through their investing, they are investing in stocks, real estate, bonds, options, ETFs. They do a lot of things for companies and for themselves when it comes to just investing and managing well. And this is something that a lot of banks don't have. Like a lot of banks, a bank like maybe Bank of America or Capital One or something, they may just be dealing with loans, dealing with fees, things like that is how they make their money. With JP Morgan Chase, they wanna make their money on the asset side, which 62% of their balance sheet consists of money from assets and asset allocation. That's great for them, which is why I actually own the company. I think Jamie Dimon is a great CEO. He is in the fourth top 100 CEOs all over the world. Remember, the asset level is real high at 280%, which is amazing. The dividend yield is 2.9%, which is great. It's covered by assets and operating cash flow. Right, but also earnings have grew by 12% a year. That's something we love to see. We love to see a company growing their earnings. More earnings mean more money for us, right? So because they're in the wealth management um, side of the um, investor strategy, we know that's good for them. So listen, I like Chase Bank. I own Chase Bank. I bank with Chase Bank, but I'm not biased to Chase Bank. So listen, man, it's your boy, The Wall Street Trapper, and y'all know my goal is to help the culture build wealth one share at a time, and right now, you trap it with Chase Mink, man. Trap with me. What's good, Travis? It's your boy, The Wall Street Trapper. And y'all know, we reporting live from the trap. My goal is to help the culture build well one share at a time. So right now, we're going to trap in front of, you know, somebody that moving their money around. Bank of America, man. Now listen, I'm going to be real with y'all. It's not my favorite. But it's my investor in Trapper duty. I can't be buying. So I gotta break down every trap house we run across. Now listen, Bank of America does have 66 million customers worldwide. They have 3,000 locations and they have 16,000 ATMs. That's a whole lot of money moving around. You know what I'm saying? But also about Bank of America. So when you're looking at a bank, you also gotta ask yourself, how do banks operate, right? And what I mean by that is simple. You have wealth management banks, you have investment banks, and then you have some banks that really make a lot of money off fees, overdraft payments, um, things of that nature. And that's how Bank of America makes a lot of their money. They're not really into wealth management. They're more into getting money off fees, overdraft, things like that. So it's something you've got to pay attention to. So what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, get behind the numbers. We're going to peel the onion back. Now we're going to break the brick down on all dimes right quick. They also have 2,200 lending centers and 2,400 financing centers. So again, we talked about that, like, so the lending center is where they, you know, lending money out, loans, and financing centers is where they're just financing things for you. Again, that's why it's important for us to understand how the bank actually makes money. Because once we know that, now we can't get lost because we look at balance sheets a lot, and with banks, they can kind of manipulate the balance sheet. I mean, they're the people that have the money, right? So they're not really gonna have bad balance sheets. So now we gotta do is peel the onion back and understand how exactly or they making money. So between the lending centers and the financing centers, that's telling us how they making money, right? So let's tap into that. So one of the things we look at with Bank of America is their bad loan allowance. We gotta pay close attention to that, right? And their bad loan allowance, they not allowing bad loans over there. Now remember, 
When we go back to 08, there was a lot of subprime, meaning you letting bad loans come through for houses. So they learned their lesson from that. So they not letting a lot of bad loans come through. Also, low risk deposits, meaning people who are not putting money in or people who may overdraft, things like that, that's how they making money. So bad loan allowance, low risk deposits, but also loan coverage. These are the three things we look at with a company like Bank of America because now we understand how they're making money. They're not really into the wealth management. Again, they're into lending, they're into financing, and they're into um, drafting and over fee, overdraft fees. So now we know how they're making their money. Now, the dividend has increased. The balance sheet isn't the best, but it is covered. Short-term and long-term debt is covered through operational cash flow and through fees. So listen, man, it's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. Y'all know my goal is to help the culture build well one shit at a time. And right now we traveling with Bank of America, man. Travel. Listen, <laughs> I know we covering a whole lot right now, but that's the purpose of Live from the Trap. Listen, if you want to get really into this, you want to really learn how to invest in these stocks, how to research these companies, listen, join Travelers Anonymous. Click the link below. Look for Travelers Anonymous. Listen, we giving you a uh, financial expert coming in once a month. We doing live book clubs. We doing live classes once a week so you can break down these stocks the Wall Street Travel with. It's called Live in the Kitchen every week. So listen, do me a favor, man. Click the link, join us in Travelers Anonymous, over 3,000 members in the group, man. Come trap with me. What's good, Travelers? This your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. Y'all know my goal is to help the culture build well one share at a time. And we report now, live from the trap. Listen, Perfect. so right now I'm gonna break down a very interesting mix, right? So we're gonna break down a company, TJ Maxx, right? But listen, inside of that, it's like breaking that down, to an ounce, four and a half, two and a quarter. We're gonna break that down. So TJ Maxx also owns Home Goods, they own Marshalls, and about three other store brands that fall up under that. Now, TJ Maxx itself has about 1,200 stores worldwide, but Marshalls are right under them, under their catalog. Marshalls has about 1,100 stores worldwide. And then Home Goods, all fall up under their umbrella, has about 809 stores worldwide. Also, they employ 286,000 people. That's amazing for this one brand to have all of these things under their umbrella. But also, it's a discount store. So a lot of your major brands, what they'll do is they'll have things that may be out of season. Well, TJ Maxx will buy those from a lesser, for a lesser price, right? And then give it to you for a lesser price, right? It's the man between the man. You already know how that go, man. So listen, you know what we're going to do, man? We're going to peel the onion back. We're going to sit at the table. We're going to break the brick down on all dimes. So we can really understand this business. And you know, can we invest in it? Can we build our world with it? You know, so try with me. So what we do know about them is this, man. You know, this is one of the things I always start off with. Is their earnings growing? So their earnings grew by 35%, which is well, but they have a high level of debt. Now I'm think I'm trying to find out myself. I got to dig into that a little more to see how they're getting all this debt if they buying things at a discount. Right, but I do know that the business has outperformed its peers, growing earnings about 21% more than the rest of its peers. Now that's good, right? That's real good. But we we just this debt thing, you know, it gets to me. But what we did realize is this: so the dividend is about 1.5%, right? But the thing about it is the dividends are covered by operational cash flow. You'll also always see me say that because a lot of times you look at business, you see they have debt, and you're like, damn man, they're gonna cut the dividend. But when the dividend is covered by the cash flow, by the operating cash flow, what happens and what that tells us is this, they're able to make uh, payments on the debt right through the operational cash flow, which allows them to allocate some of that money to paying the dividend. So that's well for us. The, oper the interest cover rate is real good for us, so they know it is strong. I um, mean, it's just some more things for us to look at when we're just breaking the business all the way down. Also with the dividend, the dividend has been paid and increased for 10 years consecutively. The reason why I, I always mention that is because we want to see how strong is the business with growing a dividend, if it's in trouble, has it had any staggering moments. So a 10 year is minimal for me. So they have been growing a dividend for the last 10 years, which means they all share, uh, talking to shareholders and providing us with value. Another thing that I do like is I looked at the company's expansion rate. 
The company does is a plan to expand and open more stores around the world, which is great. And I think these discount stores, with the time we're in right now, is actually will see uh, more light of the day. And I think more people will look for discounts um, than go and pay for a price. So listen, man, I think TJ Maxx, Home Goods, uh, Marshalls, I think it's a great business to own. They have a great growth rate. They will continue to grow. Um, so listen, man, it's your boy, The Wall Street Trapper. And y'all know my goal is to help the culture build wealth one shed at a time. Catch me next time, live from the trap, man. Trap with me.